Wow. <laughs> don't, Let her guess. Don't try it. <laughs> don't try it. <laughs> don't try this at home. <laughs> don't try it at home. <laughs> but do you hear? I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. To Halim Psalm 139, 13, and 14. For you created my innermost parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I went with Becca through. It's the size of a papaya. It's the size of an avocado. You know, they compare it to fruits all the way to the to, to the birth. It was an exciting way to try to relate to how this little precious life was growing. Verse 14, I will give thanks to you because I am awesomely and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. David, you said it well. You said it very well. And that new baby, that precious baby, if it's a boy, we've already talked about it, Bruce stole my notes, eighth day circumcision, the highest level of vitamin K, the vitamin K doesn't even come into that baby's blood till between the fifth and the seventh day. By the eighth day, it's there, and along with it is, and I'll say it wrong, prothrombin? Prothrombin. I've got to learn that one. That develops 30% by the third day. It peaks on the eighth day at 110%. It will come down and level out at the 100%, but that's also the blood clotting uh, Faculty. Uh, what's the word? Right? Factor. 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 I knew faculty wasn't right. That teacher says <laughs> factor. <laughs> How'd that just happen? How did that just happen? God. Evolution? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks, but that goes right along with my adult vocabulary of wow for my God. Okay? It's ha in evolution and it's wow <laughs> at my God. Oh, what he has done. And he's taken that blood, and he's woven that through our scripture. He uses other words sometimes. Remember, we look at the word pictures, and we see that he uses the word scarlet. All blood, by the way, is red. So that comment about whether I was blue or not when I blew the horn. <laughs> Do you know even your aristocrats are not blue bloods? The only thing that has blue blood is a crab. <laughs> that blew me away. I guess that's why they're crabby. <laughs> but scarlet in scripture refers always to blood. It refers to the life. And we find it, no surprise, all the way back in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We find it in Bereshit. Mm -hmm. We find it in Genesis chapter 38, verses 27 through 30. We have the birth of twins. We have uh, Tamar give birth to Zerah and Perez. Perez is going to be in the Messianic line. So this is an important yes, name. Right. But Zerah, he reached his arm, or his hand and part of his arm, out of the birth canal. Right. And the midwife that was there slapped a scarlet ribbon on his hand, on his wrist. And then that went back in the womb, and out comes Perez first. And they called it a breach. What's going on here? That God has his order, and God has his way. And no one calls Perez a supplanter. No one picks on him mm -hmm. like they do Yaakov, mm -hmm. who was grasping the heel of his brother. That's all. It's not to be looked on in that way. But Perez was to be the firstborn, and he was the one that God chose to put in the Messianic line. And you can read his name in Yadathayu, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 3. But I can't take you from Bereshit to Matthew. I've got to take you in between. So we go no further than Shmok, than Exodus chapter 26, and we have the tabernacle curtains. And on the tabernacle curtains are all the colors. We have gold. We have blue. We have purple. In that we see deity, we see the heavenly, we see the kingly that was woven through is the scarlet thread. And that is speaking to us of the atoning work through that shed blood. Remember that curtains, what separated man in his sinfulness from holy God. Right on the other side of that curtain was the, the mercy seat where God's presence would dwell. And I hear Romans 5, 8, and 9, but God demonstrates his love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Messiah died for us. Mm -hmm. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, 
we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. You know, many false religions, and they're that, they are religions, they revere the dead. God put the whole focus on life, the whole focus on the blood, because the blood carries life. And God wanted us focusing on life, <clears throat> not on death. I do have to jump some, so I'm going to take you into the prophets. Well, actually, let me stop off at Yeshua. Joshua chapter 2 and verse 18. And you have him to Rahab, Rahab to tie a scarlet cord and hang that out her window. And when the walls of Jericho are going to fall down, her whole household, anyone in her house, will be saved by that scarlet thread. She was immediately obedient. She put that scarlet thread out, I believe, as soon as they left her house, the spies that were there. And as she put that out, and as we see that, and we see the rescuing, we're reminded of the blood on the doorposts, are we yes. not? And Pesach, we will talk all about that. I've told you the central theme of Viagra is the, the sacrificial system. It's the blood. It's really of the whole Bible. It's from Bereshit to Revelation is the, the central theme. And we see the sacrificed lamb. We see, behold, the lamb. And we could even say that, that the Bible's theme, the entire theme, is Yeshua the Messiah and his sacrifice, his redeeming mankind. And how did he do it? By his blood. It's the blood. And we see that symbolically through scripture also. Excuse me. We see it in Bereshit again, the very beginning. Chapter 3, verse 21, we have, as I brought out before, that there were animals apparently that gave their life that the skins could be put on Adam and Eve that could cover them when they knew they were in a sinful state. Chapter 22, we have the Akita. We have Abraham willing to offer up Yitzhak, and he stopped in the ram gives its life in his stead. In Shemot chapter 12 of Exodus, we have the Passover, we have the blood on the doorposts, we have the reference to, made very clear, out of Pesach, out of the Passover Seder, will come what the called out assembly, and I'll call them that, made of mostly of Gentiles today, but there's still Jews mixed in with them, but they have what they call communion. And they don't realize the roots of communion are right out of Pesach, right out of that. Luke makes that very clear when, when Yeshua picks up the blood, the covenant, the third cup, the, the cup of redemption, and tells this is my blood being spilled out, given for you. That takes us to Yeshahu. You have to stop at Isaiah 53. You can't skip that chapter. I want to say it to my beloved Jewish brethren who read through chapter 52, and the next time they pick up the prophet Yeshua's book, they start in 54, and they don't even know that they've missed 53. But 53, we hear it, we see it every which way. It is so perfect with Thomas's song tonight, absolutely on target. Starting with verse 7, Though mistreated, he was submissive. He did not open his mouth. Like a lamb to be slaughtered, like a sheep silent before its shears, he did not open his mouth. After forcible arrest and sentencing, set, set, sentencing, excuse me, he was taken away, and none of his generation protested his being cut off from the land of the living for the crimes of my people, who deserve the punishment themselves. Therefore, I will assign him a share with the great. He will divide the spoil with the mighty for having exposed himself to death being counted among the sinners while actually bearing the sin of many and interceding for the offenders. Why? Because death gets swallowed up in victory. And by his coming back from the dead, he purchased eternal life for all. He took the sins, he took the punishment, he became the sin bearer that the one who deserved <coughs> would go free. And he conquered death himself. You can't miss it all over Isaiah 53. It's the sacrifice, the lamb. This whole sacrificial system, think about it for our Jewish people. Thousands of years, the sacrifice is being performed at the tabernacle and then at the temple again and again and again, year after year after year. And think how many with how many people, and even when it was just a lamb for a family, how many families? This was huge, huge. 
all of this happening continually. And if you think you've been with us seven years, what seven years? <laughs> they had thousands of years of doing this. And all of a sudden, on this specific year, God's perfect timing. And that's when all of a sudden Yochanan, seeing Messiah, says, look, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And all of a sudden, all of these pictures are coming into mind and going to be made very clear because we are told very clearly in Hebrews, written to our Hebrew people, chapter 9 and verse 22, that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And I've taken you to that with Leviticus, chapter 17 and 11. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Mm -hmm. I've given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it's the blood, by reason of the life that makes the atonement. It's the blood. That's the scarlet thread. We're seeing it all the way through, the theme of atonement from Bereshit all the way through. Every, every generation, every the, the leaders, the prophets, everyone <coughs> spoke about it. Everyone, the picture is there. You don't miss a generation. You don't miss a time. We talked recently about how the spirit of Amalek is there in every generation to wipe out the Jewish people. But in every generation, all the way through, we have the picture of the saving blood of Messiah. They were never left without hope. They were never left without a picture. They were never left to their own imagination. And Yeshua, Isaiah even said it, come. Let us reason together. Use your mind. Reason. Think about it. Though your sins be as scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they'll be red like crimson, they'll be like wool. And I'll ask you, why did he say it twice? Why is he just changing a little word in there? But we've got that same thought twice. And you have to go to the Hebrew to know. But I love what jumps out. Is that word that gives us scarlet? The same word that gives us crimson here. And I brought it to you before, but maybe you all weren't here. And even if you've heard it, I hope it thrills you like it does me. The word from our Hebrew is tola. Oh, the tola. The tola, yes. the tola is a worm. It's a little scrub, grub, whatever. It's a worm. The Hebrew has a different word for other worms. But for this crimson, this scarlet worm, is tola. The other word is ramah. The Yeshua who put tola here. Why? Because of this picture. This worm, and remember evolution, hello. When the female's ready to have her babies, she attaches herself to a tree trunk. She attaches herself so tightly that you cannot remove her without killing her. It literally shreds her body if you try to remove her. And when she's that permanently attached to the tree, in her underside, attached, touching that tree, is where she gives birth to her babies. She nourishes those babies. Her body's become a hard crimson shell. She protects those babies. She nourishes those babies, and she feeds those babies. She feeds them herself. She gives her life for those babies. They literally feed off of the mama. And when they have fed off the mama, then the mama gives her whole life. And in that last moment of life, she secretes, oozes out what's left in her, the flow of blood and all whatever it is that's in her. It's crimson colored. It stains her babies crimson. They'll be crimson the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And as she has died, three days later, that crimson shell turns white. Mm -hmm. And it falls off like a waxy snowflake. And do you know in that substance, they have found what helps the heart beat regularly. And they also use it to make a shellac, a protective shield. All of this out of a worm. What a picture. And now let me take you, and I'll take you next week there also, to Helene Psalm 22, a picture of crucifixion, a picture of Messiah giving his life. Verse 6, he says, I am a worm. I'm a tola. Wow. 
evolution, oh, wow, what a God, what an amazing picture. Let's reason this out. Let's think about it. Let's come to understand fully what this life-giving blood means because this is the whole crux of everything God's wanted to tell us. Let me tell you about this blood. Let me just give you a little insight to this blood. I like words that help you remember, so I'm going to tell you the power of the blood is the power to bring life, is the power to change life, is the power to sustain life, is the power that saves life. The blood is powerful. It is purifying. There's a purpose to the blood, and it's perfect. I'm going to tell you it is absolutely indispensable, the same way that you cannot have life without blood. Hebrews 9.22 again says, in fact, according to the Torah, almost everything is purified with blood. Indeed, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. Go back to the tabernacle. Go to all the furnishing. Go to the priestly garments. Everything's been purified by blood. It's amazing. It is incomparable. There is nothing like it. Kepha said that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. He says, you should be aware that the ransom paid to free you from the worthless way of life which your fathers passed on to you did not consist of anything perishable like silver or gold. On the contrary, it was the costly, bloody, sacrificial death of the Messiah as of a lamb without defect or spot. Isaiah 53. Genesis 22, Genesis 3. This is so valuable. It is beyond the infinite. And that's why Yochanan said that it's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. But he also said that it's the blood of the Son, Yeshua, that purifies us from all sin. Can you put a price on that? You talked about our national debt. That's that thing. That's not even a drop. But this blood is also power. It has the power to free us so that we are no longer enslaved to sin. Yochanan John 8.34 says, Yeshua answered them, he said, Yes, indeed, I tell you that everyone who practices sin is a slave of sin. Unless you think that you're not a sinner, unless you've lived a perfect life, and I don't think anybody has the hoods, but to say that they've lived every day perfectly in their entire life, then you're a sinner. That's it. There's just no in-between. And yet, this is going to free you from that power. Ephesians, Shaul Paul said, in union with him, with Messiah, through the shedding of blood, we are set free. Our sins are forgiven. We're redeemed. That's the purpose. There's purpose to all this. It's to no longer be under as that, that power of sin, no longer to be estranged from God by that power of sin. Remember, it separated us. The curtain separated us to show us that. Colossians, written again by Shaul Paul, chapter 1 and 20, says, Through him, through Messiah, to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Through him, I say, whether things on earth, in heaven, everything is purified by the blood shed on the cross. In Ephesians 2.13, it says, But now you were once far off, you've been brought near. How? He spells it out. Through the shedding of Messiah's blood. He has the power to deal with the sentence of sin. The sentence of sin is death. The wages of sin is death death. But God said he made this sinless man, fully man, but fully God, sinless blood, Yeshua. He made him a sin offering on our behalf so that in union with him, we might fully share in God's righteousness. God sees us in right standing through the shed blood of Messiah. That's what's being said. And we're no longer defiled. Never again. That's the best part. It's not for once. It's for all. It covers your sin and washes them away past, present, and future. It's not a sacrifice again and again and again. It's once for all. 
And that's what we're to reason about so that our sins can be white as snow, can be washed away, can be cleansed. And that's why God had to make him, Yeshua, the sin bearer, had to take our sin on himself, that we could have that righteousness because he alone has the ability to pardon. If you've ever seen a judge grant a pardon, the relief on that one is not because they earned it, but because the judge has given that. That's what God did. Through his son, we have that redemption. Through his son, we are pardoned. And I'll tell you, I'll lay the whole field even. It's not anything we do. No one can do it better than you. No one can do it worse than you because you don't do anything. It's not dependent on us. Romans 5 says, well, we were still helpless. At the right time, Messiah died on behalf of the ungodly people. And connect that. That was verse 6. Connect, connect that with Yochanan in the little books. First Yochanan, First John chapter 1 and verse 7. The blood of his son, Yeshua, purifies, cleanses us from all sin. He did it all. He did it 100%. We do nothing. But that blood that is so powerful, so purifying, and so perfect has the ability to bring us <coughs> shalom, perfect peace with our God. Because it is through him that everything is reconciled. Yochanan John 14, 27 says, What I'm leaving with you is shalom. Mm -hmm. Yeshua was speaking. I'm giving you my shalom. I don't give the way the world gives. Don't let yourselves be upset. Don't be frightened. Mm -hmm. And that takes us to Yeshua, to Isaiah's words, in chapter 26 and verse 3, one of my favorite. Thou will keep him in shalom, shalom, perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Nowhere does God say, pull up your bootstraps, get it right, come on, step up, you can do this, how long have I taught you? <laughs> he never does. Instead, he wraps arms around us of love. That's what we're being told. The blood is the means of atonement, it's the consecration, it's power, it's purpose, and it's perfect. It wards off judgment. It ratified the covenant that God made with, with man at Mount Sinai. All the elements of Mishkan, again, they were separate unto God. They were, they, the blood cleansed everything, the altar, the furnishings, the vestments, everything. And ultimately, ultimately, the crescendo, that blood was put on the altar. It was put on the mercy seat for the atonement of the soul. And that's what Viagra is saying. God said, I put it. Not you, not your priest, not your prophets, not anyone coming down the road. I put the blood on the altar. We know he did it through Yeshua when Yeshua was on this earth. But that blood that Yeshua shed was literally put on the mercy seat in heaven. That's why the curtain of heaven got pulled up and pinned back by nails, and it's wide, paved with his blood for us to go home one day. Wow. <laughs> There's not a better word. The victory is ours. Hebrews 9, 14. How then, then how much more the blood of the Messiah, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself to God as a sacrifice without blemish. He will purify our conscience from works that lead to death so that we can serve the living God. And then my favorite, well, they're all my favorite, but the Christian <laughs> over here, we get to Revelation. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, the first part says it all. They defeated him. And they're referring to Satan. They defeated the enemy. They defeated Satan. And how did they defeat him? It spells it out. Because of the Lamb's blood. Not because they got strong, because they got guerrilla warfare, because they got smart, because they found a hole in the armor. No. No. Because they came into Messiah's blood. 
wow, I keep saying it, but wow, it is perfect, it is powerful, it has a purpose. The law made nothing perfect. Hebrews 7 tells us that. It made nothing perfect, but it did introduce us to a better hope. And it's through that better hope we come near to God. Remember how we've talked about the sacrifices, the korban? And it said korban comes from the root word karuv, and karuv means to draw near. So we draw near through the sacrifice. We don't see it as something gory now, do we? We see it as life. We see it as, as being cleansed and, and given a new life. And we no longer are the caterpillar that's crawling on the ground that doesn't get anywhere. We now have wings that carry us heavenward because we have the blood. The blood that brings peace. That's why, it, and I believe Shaul Paul says in Hebrews 13, 20, Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep. Remember that next week? Yeah. 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 Through the blood. Preview. Dangling the carrot. <laughs> Through the blood of the eternal covenant. Janet, how long is eternal? Forever. <laughs> and then he spells it out. That covenant, that eternal covenant, that's the blood of that covenant that comes out of the shepherd who was brought up out of the dead. And he spells it out. I can't read into this. He just simply said it. It's Yeshua our Adonai. It's Jesus, our Lord. He just says it. And then a little later in that chapter, in fact, the very next verse, he says, and he'll equip you in every good thing to do his will. That's how we do it. It's in his power. It's not in us. It's not ourselves. He's the one. He did it all. He keeps it all. And he always will. Wow. Revelation 1.5 from Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, a faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. That's in position. He was the first to rise out of death in that abundant, eternal life that he grants to us. And it says that the rulers of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us, released us from our sins by his blood. Revelation says what Romans says. Romans says what Yeshua Isaiah said. Isaiah says what the psalmist says. The psalmist says what comes all the way back to in the beginning. It's the blood. It's all about the blood. This blood is perfect. This blood has a purpose to forgive us of our sins. This blood is powerful. And I love it. I have parked in Revelation 5. I can't get out of it, and I love it. Verse 9, worthy are you to take the scroll and to break its seals. For you were slaughtered. And you purchased people for God with your blood. And here's the great equalizer from every tribe, language, people, and nation. Amen. If you're not a tribe, you're a people. And you're a nation, you are somewhere in there. God so loved the world. Hallelujah. 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 I want that blood pulsating through my veins. That's what I want wrapped up in all those vessels that are carrying that blood all over. And I want it so much in me that when a mosquito bites me, he flies away singing, there's power in the blood. <laughs> power. Power. Wonder-working power in the precious blood of the land. Hallelujah. That's saving power. That's the blood of the Lamb. And it's free on the altar for you. Not in heaven. That's down here on earth. Now, no mosquitoes. They're gone from heaven. But I want to ask you, have you been washed in the blood? Have you been saved by the blood? If you haven't, you don't have life. You are existing, but you don't have this new life, and you don't have this power, and you're not guaranteed that place in heaven. It's all through the blood. If there was another way that God did a disservice to his son who was equal to him and willing to carry out the plan, masterminded by the two of them together before the foundations of the earth, not plan B. He didn't need plan B. He's got the perfect plan and nothing can thwart it. 
not even Satan. Remember, they defeated Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I, if you could see the Lamb I see on that throne right now. <laughs> I'm going to close in prayer. I'm going to pray. If you don't have eyes to see that, this moment, you'll, you'll come into it, and it will change you forever. Forever. And if you've got it, tell them, hallelujah. Tell them, thank you. Praise Him and rejoice in it. Embrace life. He's given us life. Oh, Lord, our God. Lamb of God, thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for redeeming us, not just through your death, but through your resurrected life, that it is power, and it is saving power, and it's all your power, and you give it freely to all who will come, who just simply say, I want your blood in my place. It's what I deserve, but you took it for me. And how we praise you, O oh God, that from every tongue and nation, every people everywhere, there's no one who will not be welcomed by you, who will not have this blood placed in them. So Lord, I pray anyone who's hearing these words and has not said yes to you, not said you're the sacrifice in my place, I want you as my saving grace. Lord, may they say yes now. May they open their hearts up to you. May they come into that new and abundant life that they'll see they're no longer a caterpillar. They are birth into a butterfly that can fly up into the heavens that one day they know they will be home with you too because you did it all. Oh, we can never thank you enough. We praise you, those of us who have you in our lives. You are our very breath. You have done it all and we praise you. We thank you and we pray, Lord, that let people see you in us that they'll want this life for themselves too. Oh, Lord. You are the Lamb, as though you've been slaughtered. And now we see you high and lifted up, sitting on the throne, and we praise you forever and ever and ever. Oh, Lord, thank you. In the holy name of our precious sacrifice Lamb, the blood shed, victory given, we say, Oh, man and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Um, when you were talking about there's nothing we have to do, but the only thing we have to do is accept. If we don't accept, that doesn't work. You get to the key to yes. open that door. Yes, you accept or you reject. <coughs> and there's nowhere in between. Uh -uh. There is nowhere in between. If you're not accepting, you are rejecting. There's no in between, folks. Everybody talks about an in between and another day. No one's promised another day, and there's no in between. You're either accepting or you are rejecting. One Don't reject. Don't reject. One more. Um, and we're written in the Book of Life from way before, before the, the world was formed. Before the of the earth, even, yes. So the God loved us so much back then that he still, but he loved us so much that he wrote our name down. It was up to us to accept it or not, and if we don't accept, it gets blotted out. But the blotting out comes at uh, the, the final term, yeah. rejection. Right. Maybe the last moment of life, whatever it is, but it's because that one rejected. That one stood there and said, no, I'll do it my way. It's God's way or it's no way. That's it. That's it. Worthy is Lamb. Behold the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. And wait till you meet the shepherd who is also the Lamb. <laughs> then come in the sock with me. <laughs> We're on a roll this go.